Hello, it's Ashley here from Paper and Twine and welcome to day 15 of 31 days of Christmas crafting. We're almost halfway through. Whoop, whoop. Um, yes, mm. what are we going to do today? We are going to make what I think is quite a simple but very effective card. I've been trawling Pinterest and YouTube for fun fold cards um, because I've just accepted a commission um, from Hunky Dory and uh, they want me to use one of their kits that go in the box magazines to make five fun fold cards. So I'm looking at things that I think might be appropriate and I've come across this fun fold, there's various tutorials out there on the internet but I've followed Paul Ford's tutorial. He is an amazing YouTuber um, makes lots of albums and all sorts of things. Here I am waffling, I am sorry, but I'll leave a link to his channel down below. Well, I'll leave a link to his tutorial because he's um, he's he's very gifted in, in what he does and he's got a Facebook group as well, um, which you can find a link to on his channel. But hey ho, that is enough of me waffling on. We are going to use some of this Reindeer Christmas paper, but obviously you use whatever you have got in your stash. And I have got an alternative look to show you at the end of the video, so stick around for that. And please, if you're not subscribed, I'd love you to subscribe and remember to give me a thumbs up and hit that notification bell so you know when I next upload. I mean, for the next 31 days, it is every day because it's 31 days of Christmas crafting. So until the 31st of October, blah, 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 I am uploading every day. Um, so yes, I'm going to be using some paper from this collection, which I'll talk about later. And uh, let's get to what we need for this card. I've done a little bit of prep already just to save time because I know we're all very busy. So you will need, and you'll get one card out of a sheet of A4, and you need a scrap of the same colour as well. So you need a piece that is five by seven, you need a piece that is five by seven and a half, and you need a piece that is two by five. We can put this piece, which is our base piece, to one side, and this is going to be our stopper. We can put that to one side just for now. On the seven and a half piece, I've already gone ahead and folded and burnished. You need to score at half an inch. This is on the seven and a half inch side, half an inch, two and a quarter, four and three quarters, and six and a half. And you want to give this first half inch score line a really good burnish. And then the others, you're going to do a mountain, a mountain, and then a valley. You don't need to burnish those quite so hard. And you're going to end up with a shape that looks like that. Okay, I've gone ahead and I've applied some tape to this portion here. I'm going to bring in my five by seven piece. And what we're going to do is we're going to stick these two bits together, all being well. And um, I don't use tape very often, as you know, but uh, Natasha Foot uses it a lot and a lot of other crafters do. And I've seen them do this trick where they peel back a little bit of the tape and it means that you can line up. So I'm just going to carefully line that up and I've only got a little bit of my tape uncovered at the moment and I'm just going to keep hold there and pull this away and then I can attach this and press it down and we should have a nice idea. There we go. So uh, working now on our stopper piece I'm going to mat and layer. So um, I've done two mats or two layers. Um, so this piece is two inches by five. So my background, which I've cut out of holographic cardstock, is um, one and seven eighths by four and seven eighths. So it gives me a nice mat like that. And then I've chosen to use for my main paper this plaid. So again, it's a card, 
think this card would be good for teenagers but it's also very masculine and who doesn't love a plaid at Christmas and I've chosen green as my base because it's green in this pattern here but the pop of red red and green you know are our traditional Christmas colors aren't they so I'm going to glue on my one and seven eighths by four and seven eighths piece making sure I don't over glue because I don't want oozage I've got a bit of tape stuck to my mat there and just because I'm using collar I get plenty of wiggle room but you do need to make sure you leave it a little bit because um, it will continue to move and then this piece is one and three quarters by four and three quarters and it's just going to go just going to go on here like so it's a beautiful day today nice and bright and sunny need to try and get out there if I can but I'm just so busy haven't planned theatre train yet there we go that's that now I'm just going to put this to one side for a minute to dry before I do my next little bit of work on that then we're going to come in for our piece here can you see what we're making yet it's actually called a bay window card and um, suitable for any time of year but lovely for Christmas I think so you will need for your um, pieces here you will need two pieces that are four and seven eighths by one and five eighths and you will need two pieces that are four and three quarters by one and a half that's for these two side pieces here for the centre piece you'll need a piece that is four and seven eighths by two and three eighths and then you'll need a piece that is four and three quarters by two and a quarter and because my paper's kind of directional it's got a continuous pattern I've cut my pattern paper for one piece but we're just going to uh, mat and layer all of our pieces on here now I will just pause you while I do that because you don't need to see me do that. So I've gone ahead and done that. It looks like curtains on our window, doesn't it? And I've also cut for this little strip here a piece that is seven eighths of an inch by four and seven eighths of an inch, and then a piece that is three quarters of an inch by four and three quarters, just to finish that bit off. Now this should be dry and we can bring in our um, stopper. You can see that this piece is not cut to the same but um, I think we'll be all right. We will be all right and I want to bring in some foam tape. We need to raise this up a little bit. I'm just looking to see which direction I want that in. Actually I think that might follow on better. So this is going to be the right hand side. So I want to put some foam tape all along the edge like so just going to cut that off and we're going to very carefully stick this to the edge of our piece here to create a stopper i hope you can see what i'm doing so i'm not pressing my tape down i'm just lining up my edges I'm going to pick up just to make sure that that is flat and that's as good as done and then you can see that that kind of slots in there and gives us a bow window shape how cool is that so it is up to you then how you want to decorate it I've gone ahead and I've cut out of this sheet here try and bring it in one of the reindeers I've cut out Comet you can't see <laughs> um, it's this sheet let me put it down yeah so um, I've gone ahead and you can see I've cut out down here and I haven't measured him I've just eyeballed him but then I've cut another piece of the plaid and another piece of holographic I'm just going to layer all that up and it should 
be slightly wider in fact actually I need a piece of green as well it's going to be slightly wider than my window so I'm going to cut my piece of green and um, mat and layer all this up and come back to you so I've gone ahead and I've fixed my focal point on the middle of the bay window and I thought these little bits just needed something obviously you use whatever you've got in your stash whatever papers you could stamp an image you could put a sentiment on each of these but I've I didn't want to sacrifice the um these because I've got a, an idea for these cards um but I've cut apart the front cover um, there's some reindeer on the front cover so I've, I've cut a section out and I've just fussy cut some of the reindeer and left a little um, brown border all the way around the edge um, I don't know what to do this one because it's got this little bit coming down we'll, we'll have to see what we can do with Dasha but uh, those will be going in here so they don't get lost I am liking that these are coming with um, this kind of ziplock bag so you can keep all your scraps in one place uh, for that collection so um, you could just write um, inside if you wanted to but I've gone ahead and I've just cut a four and seven eighths by four and seven eighths piece of white card to write my message on in fact actually thinking about it white because if we haven't, haven't really got any white not bright white um an off-white or ivory would be quite nice with this I think and kind of ties in with the shabby sheetness of this collection this kind of to me like a vintage shabby sheetness vibe going on so I'm going to just pop that down in the center and then I've made a sentiment and I've cut apart the happiness and cheer from one of the A4 focal point uh, sheets, focal image sheets from the Thoughtful Studio collection that I was sent as well and I've just matte and layered that up on the holographic and the plaid and I'm just going to put that in the centre as a little sentiment and I think that's quite a quick and simple but effective card and it fits in a five by seven envelope flat like that but then that tucks under there and there you get your bay window and as in true blue peter fashion here is one i made earlier that is a completely different vibe just to show you the kinds of things that you can do so I took a sheet of A4 um, heavyweight cardstock and made one of my backgrounds using tumbled glass weathered wood distress ink and speckled egg oxide and just did the smooshing with an acrylic block technique on a whole sheet of A4 then I cut down the bits I wanted and I've layered everything on um, sparkle card this time and, and um, I cut a window out of the second or the middle part of the bay and um, I've adhered here that stag that we embossed the other day and so when you close this the top part of him is kind of peeking out and I've just added to the background some Lavinia stamps um, the pound stamps so this mushroom is the pound stamps and a little pippin looking up at the stag and I think that's adorable the season's greeting is from a Joe Firth Young Christmas set that I've got but just to show you a completely different look if you're more into your stamping than cutting paper um, I've just again used some of the larger Lavinia stamps here um, I had a little experiment with this tall thin mushroom I stamped a very very pale impression of weathered wood and then I went in with a water brush to kind of watercolor it more and then I've gone over with the um, meadow grass which I absolutely love so it looks as if the deer 
mean you can't really see the deer very well maybe I should have done him just on white I mean it was an experiment um, but I quite like that let me know what you think I should be back tomorrow with day 16 um, as I say I will leave a link to Paul Ford and I'll leave a link to um, Sally Butler actually uh, because her website does give a link to a bit more products than the Thoughtful Studio link that I've got um, so yeah I'll do that I'll be back tomorrow take care everybody bye now